Welcome back to my channel. I am bringing a series of videos for you to teach you how to build an industry standard Flutter application from scratch. After watching this complete series, you will learn basic as well as advanced topics in Flutter. At the end of this series, you will have successfully built an industry standard Flutter application with very good UI and a scalable code base with some excellent coding practices. You will learn some of the bas very basic and most commonly used widgets and libraries. As well as, you will also work on some useful animations, advanced widgets, and state management techniques. You will learn about making clean architecture, block pattern, network calls, handling uncertain errors, high vis storage, dependency injection, language management, and many more important features needed to develop a Flutter application. And when you are done with the developing of application, I will also show you how to publish the application on Google Play Store or Apple Store as well. You will create a responsive mobile application that does not pixel out on various mobiles of different densities and resolutions. Since the design that we have in hand is for mobile portrait, hence this app will not support landscape and web versions. That means this app can run on landscape mode and browser but will render its components in a bad way. Having said that, if you wish to learn landscape and web version of this application, do let me know and I will try to create a design that works on landscape and web. So let's get started. An app based on movies is a great example by which we can cover various aspects of building an app. Movie app consists of 5 main screens. This app will be backed by DMDB API. Home screen will essentially show trending, popular, now playing and coming soon movies. It will also host navigation drawer menu. Starting from top, the app bar has a menu icon, app logo and a search icon. On tap of menu icons, you will see a navigation bar. On tap of search icon, you will see a screen where you can search the movies. Below the app bar, you will see a beautiful movie carousal that shows trending movies. While scrolling through trending movies, you will see a subtle animation of the movie cards. The backdrop image of selected movie from the movie carousal is shown as background of the movie carousal with frosty classy look. Movie tabs. This section is the last section in the home screen that will load popular, now playing and coming soon movies. You will see three tabs and by tapping on any of these tabs, the respective movies will be displayed. These movies can be scrolled horizontally. On tap of any movie, you will navigate to the movie details screen. When you are in a search screen, you will search movies via query text in the input field on top. You will see movies load in the list below the input field. If your search has no movies, then you will see proper message. When you tap on the movie, you will navigate to the movie details screen. App bar on movie detail screen contains a back arrow. On tap of this icon, you will navigate back to the home screen. On the end of this app bar, you will also see a favorite icon which is a toggle and serves two purposes. First, it tells you that certain movie is not your favorite movie. Second, you can tap on this icon and mark this movie as your favorite movie. When you come back to this movie and see favorite icon as filled with white color, that means this movie is your favorite movie. Movie background image is big and on top of this, it has a nice gradient matching with the theme of the application. Adding a gradient gives a darker look to the image and also makes the title of the movie highlight on any type of image. We will also see rating of the movie together with the title of the movie. Cast list. Now you have cast of the movie shown in horizontal scrolling widget. This is almost identical with how the movie tabbed widget is built, except that it does not have tabs. Each cast card has the cast image, name and the character they played in the movie. Watch trailers. TMDB also stores some trailers for the movies. You will see this button when there are trailers for the movies. If there are no trailers, this button will be hidden. On tap of the button, you will navigate to trailers screen and can watch the trailers. In trailer screen, you will find all the trailers related to the movie you have selected. You can watch them using YouTube plugin. You can also select any other trailer from the list to watch them instead. When you navigate back to the home screen, you tap on the menu icon, you will see a translucent navigation drawer that has link to favorite movies, language, feedback 
एंड अबाउट लेट एस लुक एट दम वन बाय वन फेवरेट मूवीज इन फेवरेट मूवीज यू विल सी ऑल दोज मूवीज दैट यू हैव मार्क्ड एज फेवरेट फ्रॉम मूवी डिटेल स्क्रीन द फेवरेट मूवीज हेयर आर पुट इन अ ग्रिड स्टाइल यू विल ऑल्सो बी अलाउड टू रिमूव इट फ्रॉम फेवरेट्स बाय टैपिंग ऑन द डिलीट आइकन इफ यू टैप एनी कार्ड यू विल गो टू द मूवी डिटेल स्क्रीन नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द लैंग्वेज चेंज यू कैन स्विच बिटवीन लैंग्वेजेज इंग्लिश और स्पेनिश एज ऑफ नाउ बट यू कैन एड एनी नंबर ऑफ लैंग्वेजेज इन द एप्लीकेशन आई विल शो यू हाउ यू कैन ईजिली एड मोर लैंग्वेजेज इन टू द एप्लीकेशन फीडबैक एवरी ऐप नीड्स अ फीडबैक फ्रॉम इट्स रियल यूजर्स एंड बायर डैश हैज बीन अ ग्रेट सोल्यूशन फॉर इंट्रैक्टिव एंड यूजफुल फीडबैक डिरेक्टली फ्रॉम एंड यूजर रेटिंग्स जनरली डोंट गिव द एग्जैक्ट फीडबैक दैट्स वाई I will teach you how quickly you can add feedback into the application matching with the app theme. Last but not least, about section. When you click on about, you see a nice pop-up matching app theme and showing relevant data. This is a model dialog that is dismissed when the button is pressed. Developing apps in Flutter gives you free hand to choose the architecture and libraries. With so many options in your hand, you will often donate a lot of your time in selecting a specific architecture. Most popular and trustworthy architecture is Clean Architecture, where you have separate layers for presentation, domain, and data. That's why I will also teach you how to build application using Clean Architecture. Let's talk about presentation layer. We all love making UI in Flutter, and it won't be wrong. to say that one of the primary reasons people have switched to flutter is the ease with which you can create cool and flexible uis while it is easy to write flutter widgets it is even easier to put business logic and taking critical decisions in your widgets which in longer run will make your application unmaintainable presentation layer mainly consists of widgets many widgets combined together to create a screen a screen in clean architecture is considered as journey Okay let's move on to data layer data layer is exposed to outside world whole soul responsibility is to bring data from rest apis local database firebase be it any service that give data to your application will fall under data layer next will be our domain layer now you have one layer for ui interaction and other for api interaction domain layer acts as a communication channel between data layer and presentation layer both of these layers will depend directly on the domain layer and will never interact with each other in common folder you will have constants extension files and other utility code to create a flutter project open terminal and type flutter create and the application name in some time the flutter application will be created and then you can open vs code by typing code space dot this will give you bare minimum files or folders to create a to start with the flutter application so in lib folder you will create a presentation folder inside that folder you will create four more folders journeys widgets block and themes let's see what these folders will contain journeys will be like home screen movie detail screen watch trailers screen favorite movies screen navigation drawer loading screen each of these journey will surely have a screen dot file and a small widgets that will be used in making the screen now when we are talking about widgets we will have a common folder for widgets widgets folder in presentation folder will consist of small ui building blocks which will be used throughout your application across different screens like button logo app bar and so on you will see more as we go in this is this series and then blocks blocks will be heart of your ui where you will make decisions about what and when to show in the ui for example till the time movie details are fetched from api ui will show a loader and once details are fetched from the api you will see the movie details on the screen well we will discuss more on that when we go in depth of each of these things 
last folder in presentation layer will be themes all the themes be it like text styles your colors button themes dialog themes will go in themes folder so there will be one place to maintain all theme related information in data folder you will create another folder which will be data sources based on the application features and different apis and local database that it has to fetch data from you can have as many multiple data sources as you want each of them will only interact with repositories next will be your repository folder repositories will make decision whether to fetch data from remote data source or local data source behaving as a single source of truth for the ui ui should not know from where the data is fetched in data layer repositories will be implementations of repository abstract classes in the domain layer more on that domain layer section then you will have another two folders for models and tables models and tables are again extensions of the entities present in the domain layer models are mapped directly with the api response and tables are directly mapped with the database response you will learn more about them when we start actual coding then there will be a folder core which will have nothing much but all the core concept of the common behavior of fetching and parsing the remote data next will be our domain layer so in domain folder again you will create another folder which will be called entities entities represent data that will be required by the ui these entities will be extended by models and tables in the data layer to maintain certain level of abstraction then you will create another folder repository repositories in domain layer are abstract classes which only tell what data has to be fetched but the decision of how and from where the data has to be fetched is made by the repository implementations in data layer third folder and the last folder in domain layer will be use cases use cases consist of the features that the app will work on like fetching popular movies trending movies or movie details these all are a type of use cases use cases are simple classes that directly pass the input parameters required to fetch details to the repository use cases will directly interact with the blocks you will understand more when we actually start coding well in common folder uh, you will have extensions you will have constants you will have some common files which will be used by whole throughout the application well there will be one more folder which will be holding our dependency injection files so basically it will be you know it will be a core of your application which will provide all the instances of these repositories data sources use cases blocks everything to your whole application that's why there will be a different folder for that and that will be called di by this we have come to an end in this video this was all about getting started in the next video you will learn about making network calls in the best optimized way possible thanks for watching if this video helped you in learning something or other then it would be great if you can like the video i will love to hear back from you also if you are new to my channel do subscribe and toggle on the notifications so you will not miss on the future videos in this series see you in the next video